this incident. I'm joined now by Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield. Well, thanks so much for being with us. This must have been a terrifying experience, at least for us watching it on Earth who don't have uh, space experience. But you've been on board a Soyuz aircraft. What have it been like to kind of crash down to Earth like that? Yes. Uh, hi, Isabel. I had the chance to be the co-pilot of the Soyuz uh, a few years ago. If you listen to the voices of the crew, especially Alexei, the commander, he doesn't sound terrified at all. In fact, he's calm, trained, matter of fact, dealing with the problem. And, and I think he did a wonderful job of safely getting his, uh, his capsule back down onto the surface of the Earth. The number one concern is the crew okay? Number two, how about the crew up on the space station? And now, of course, try and figure out what went wrong with the rocket. But what does it feel like crashing down to Earth like that? What would, what would your body go through? Uh, well, it, it, we always crash down to Earth. That's how every flight ends. Um, what, what's different about this one, Isabel, is that they were about two minutes and 45 seconds into launch. They were about 80 kilometers up above the Earth when they had the malfunction. Their, their capsule was separated from the rocket and then they tumble and fall. They manually selected a, a ballistic mode and then they start plummeting into the atmosphere and you sort of fall a long way and then the air gets thick. It's almost as if you threw a stone into a pond. It floats for a while and then it hits the thickness of the water and you're really decelerated. They would have felt somewhere in the order of six or seven times their normal weight, maybe even a little more. Um, so they'd be crushed. But that's how most space flights go. So they're ready for it. It's not what they wanted to happen. They'll be pretty um, angry and disappointed, you know, that, that they didn't get to go to space today. But the, the important thing and is that the, the automated systems worked well, the crew worked well, and everybody's safe. Okay, but what kind of impact is this going to have? So there are other uh, astronauts on the ISS now. Uh, and what impact is this going to have on future missions as well? It's going to have a really significant impact, Isabel. Uh, first, we have to figure out what went wrong. What was the problem with the rocket so that we can fix it and then uh, trust another rocket and put a crew on top of it to try this again? That might be simple if we find out exactly what the problem was and there'll be a commission doing that, but it could take a while. If you look after the Columbia accident in 2003 or Challenger in 1986, those took over two years to launch another space shuttle. This should go faster than that, but it still could be quite a while before, um, before we get the next crew to go. So the three people up on the space station, they're essentially marooned right now with no way for another crew to come up until we solve all these problems. Of course, the worrying situation there. Well, Chris Hadfield, fantastic to have your insight there, and we hope to have you back on the program soon.